Hi, I'm Bonnie Francis, and we're getting ready in May for the Senior Summit. It happens May 15th at the 4-H Park, and we have with us Robert Bookman, who's with Bright Star Home Care. So we wanted to talk to him and find out about their company and what they may be doing out the summit. So we'll start with the company first. Tell us, what does Bright Star have that senior citizens might need? Well, Bright Star is a, a private home care company, mm -hmm. and uh, what we have for senior citizens is that we can provide assistance in their home, but it's as much uh, what they need is what the family needs also, is that when we, we go into people's homes, we help to provide those seniors or elderly people, right. individuals with uh, illnesses or certain diagnoses where they need some additional help to stay at home, we provide them with assistance to keep them safe in the home so they can stay there as long as possible. Um, what, what that means is instead of going to an assisted living or a nursing home uh, down the road, they have, there are options now where they can stay in their house and just get the assistance that they need, which might be part-time or full-time, and uh, it can last as long as they need and end when they need it to end, and it's very flexible. Um, most of that is things that people have to pay for themselves, but I know with doing nursing home ministry, sometimes we've heard the term a waiver. Is there any type of assistance or things like that that people, or is it all where they just pay for it? There is a, what's called a Medicaid waiver, uh -huh. and only certain agencies provide assistance under that Medicaid waiver through the state, which you have to qualify for through uh, financial means, if you don't have the financial means. Unfortunately, we don't work with uh, the Medicaid waiver, but that is a way for certain individuals that maybe are short on funds to be able okay. to qualify to get some assistance in their home. The assistance is limited. What we do is usually privately paid for. Okay. It is it is covered by long-term care okay. insurance, right. which more and more people have, have at this point. Um, that type of insurance actually covers assisted livings and nursing homes as well. So, and then usually within that policy is a home care option. And we work with all the long-term care insurance policies. And, and I've been doing this for, uh, we're in our seventh year, and more and more people are actually have long-term care policies more than more than they used to back uh, six, seven years ago. So it is a way for to, to pay for it. But for, for the most part, it's privately paid for. Okay. So long-term care insurance, what types of services do they, I mean, would they pay for someone to come in to assist to clean the house? If well, Basically, if, if you yes, but what we really what we do is we focus on a couple different areas when we go into to somebody's home, and by the way, all of our care is is overseen by a registered nurse. Okay. So so what we do initially, um, usually it's someone from the family that's calling us, right? Um, and because they're concerned about their loved one. Uh, for whatever reason, they might live out of the area. They might uh, and came home and they've noticed that mom and dad or mom is not doing as well as she used to, and they want to give her some additional assistance uh, so that they can have peace of mind that that she's safe when they're not there. Or someone may have had a fall or have been diagnosed with something or had some sort of illness. Um, they call us, and then what we do is a nursing assessment in the home. So we go out with our RN and uh, we talk to the family, we talk to the individual we're going to, going to assist and from that conversation we develop a plan, plan. of care mm -hmm. and we talk to them about what types of shifts or what times you know we, they would need someone to be in there and it would be anywhere from let's say two hours a day which we do two hour short shifts to 24 hours a day seven days a week and believe it or not we do a lot of 24-7 24-7 care. What's nice about it is, as I say, someone is um, falls and breaks their hip. Right. And they go in, out into a hospital, they go to a rehab, they come back, they still need help when they're at home. Right. But our care, can we can start out at a, at a higher level of Therapy. multiple hours of days right. and then take it down to nothing uh, and basically be done and they don't need us because they've kind of graduated back to being independent. But the type of care we provide in the home is anything from hands-on personal care, helping somebody dress and bathe, or actually help them or assist them during those times when they're most at risk of falling, mm -hmm. primarily. Um, and, and or we can also do kind of non-medical tasks, which might be laundry or meals, um, helping them grocery shop, take them to doctor's appointments. Basically those things that maybe they can't do because they don't have the ability to do that on their own anymore. 
Um, so a combination of those things is usually what ends up in the plan of care. And, and the plan could transition, like you said, as they get stronger and as they're able to do some of those things that they couldn't when they first got home. Right, so what we, we have two couple different types of clients. One might be a long-term client that we we're seeing maybe three, four, or five times a week. Uh, for certain at certain times and we go out there and we were there for six months I have some clients I've had for six years right um, but others they were there primarily to help them get well right so and it's important because when someone comes back from a rehab let's say they've had an illness and they've gone through some therapy a nursing home rehab they're most if you look at statistics they're most vulnerable to re-injure themselves or to have an issue when they first the first 48 hours they come back into the home because their condition may have changed. Maybe they can't walk as well. Maybe they don't have the abilities that they did when they've left. They're still rehabbing. So we can come in and actually provide them more assistance those first few days, the first week or so. And as they continue to get stronger and they're working with their doctor and they get better, our assistance tapers off. So it can be very temporary. This right. isn't a long-term thing. We're only there really to provide whatever they need as long as they need it. Right. And the plan could change the other way too. As the parent is changing in age and getting less and less mobile, right. you may pick up more hours. It works both ways. Right. You and just have to do it on an individual basis. Yeah, and the, the what's what I you know, what I like about what we do is that we give people an option they're not used to having, which so what I mean by that is is in when back when I grew up, my grandfather was in a nursing home mm -hmm. for years and years and there was really no idea of having private home care come in. And so now there's this option to do that, but it can be temporary. Let's say somebody owns a home and they've been living there for the past 40 years and they're not ready um, mentally and or physically necessarily, necessarily to go into a nursing home facility or assisted living and they want to stay at home as long as they can. The family can buy some time right. with that by using a small amount of home care services to keep them safe right. and then down the road still make that decision because when you go into an assisted living or a nursing home at that point you're making somewhat of a semi-permanent decision because you're selling the home you're selling the belongings you're you're really say okay we're going to take this person out of that that situation and right. put them into a different one and you, there's really not a lot going back from that but this allows people to stay at home as long as they phys physically can and we, as long as we can keep them safe they can stay in the home right so um, you know that's that's really I think one of the the biggest benefits so tell us at the <clears throat> summit what what information can people will you have flyers there um, what, what did they get what we are always, they gonna look for uh, well we always have to have the flyers and giveaways where you know usually we're giving away uh, they didn't bring any today but uh, like there's a big yellow which shopping bag, you know, the ones that are recyclable or the ones that you use instead of getting the plastic bags. I can guarantee you that if you see someone carrying it around, it's almost fluorescent yellow, so you'll know that they stopped <laughs> yeah. by our, our, our booth. But uh, but we go to the, mainly to educate right. people, okay? Right. Because a lot, of, nine times out of 10, when someone calls our office, they're not familiar with home care. So we ask them, one of the questions we always ask them is, are you familiar with how, how home care works or what's involved with it? And nine times out of 10, they say no. no. You know, most people have heard of assisted livings and nursing homes. So a large part of what we do is educate, educate. people. Yeah. Yep. So that's the plan. Educate and then uh, hopefully when those individuals need assistance from us, they pick up the phone and give us a call. Right. And, and the good part is keeping them involved, you know, engaged. We don't want someone to come home and just sit there and not get up out of a chair or anything like that. Right. Um, the more active they stay and, and involved, then it's better for them. Yeah, and that's that's really the the goal of our services is, is basically to, to make sure that they're not. I mean, my mom's 88 years old, and uh, we just recently moved her out of her house uh, over the past couple of years into an assisted living, and we did have home care for a little while, but you know. The big reason we did that initially was even to go to home care was because she was sitting there by herself. She right. wasn't able to drive as much as she was before, and uh, and she needed help, but she also needed people to come in and you know interact with her and help her uh, do some things and uh, provide her some company. Right, that socialization's a big thing. Right, it is. It it helps them because I know I make phone calls to shut-ins, and you know sometimes 
they're lonely and they want to talk on the phone for an hour and it's because they don't have inter social interactions and can't get out. What's interesting about that is that when we go into people's homes, everyone is uh, vastly different from one end of the spectrum to the other. I mean, there's some people who, when we go into the home, really want to stay in their home, and they're used to being there on their own, and they and they, they know we need to be there, but they we kind of need to stay out of their way a little bit yeah. because they need their own space, and that's why they want to stay at home because they're so used to being independent and they want to have that space. And then there's others that we go in and they're very welcoming to somebody being in there and just want to interact. Uh, so every time we go into a home, it's a completely different situation with the family and the, the interaction with that particular individual. And uh, it's very interesting. Honestly. I, I know when Mike's mom had had trouble getting the cleaning done and we used to go down there. Thursdays was the day that we designed to go down and we'd go down there intending to get the house clean and she just wanted us to sit and talk. Right. You know, she wanted the socialization. So it's like, all right, I see this is going to have to change. You know, the plan didn't work the way it was. Well, so. You know, it, it's interesting because um, home care isn't, isn't necessarily the answer for every person. Like, mm -hmm. like my mom did well with home care, um, but then it got to a point where she really, you know, needed to go into an assisted living. Right. Every one of those types of solutions has its place, okay? Um, so, assisted living, I'm, so I'm not saying home care is, you know, this is what everyone should be doing forever, but it does have its place in the, in the let's say, the, the transition process yeah. Yeah. in terms of when people are, as they're aging and where they need to be. And uh, the way we look at ourselves, Bright Star, my background prior to doing this for 25 years was consulting. And a lot of what we do really is consulting. Mm -hmm. We're listening to families, we're listening to the individuals, and we're trying to figure out, okay, what what's you're telling, the best? what from what you're telling me, what's the best solution that yeah. we can provide to you that would meet your needs today? And if it's not the right thing, then we recommend other things. So, yeah. Well, we thank you for your time, and hopefully, thank we'll you. have the good weather, and people will come out to the summit and stop by your booth. Get that, that sounds great. Bright colored bag there you go <laughs> all right that sounds good thank well, you bonnie thank Appreciate you it. see you out there right, bye.